The Australian Ghost Whisperer with Katerina Legato and James Jennings. Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Australian Ghost Whisperer. Today I have a special guest, beautiful Julie with me and over the last few days I had quite a few house clearings so Julie decided that she'd come along to have an experience of what my life is like when I go to clear houses. Julie has a lovely gift that I'm hoping to um, bring through with um, her coming along to some of the house clearings that I did. So we're going to tell you about our days together. We did two house clearings together. We did. It was very interesting. <laughs> and how you felt so let's talk about the first one that we did and how you well, well, felt well. she actually <laughs> i got her to meditate connect with her guides open up because she's quite intuitive and she was able to see some of the stuff that was going on in the house so tell us about how you felt oh god katarina here we go um look it was definitely a lot <laughs> um but it was amazing. It opened, you know, I've always been, like Katarina said, quite intuitive ever since I was young. Um, had, had a bit of a gift, can sort of see things beyond what normal people aren't able to see. But this took me to a complete different level. Um, and whew, the first time we, we did the house clearing together, um, look, it was great in the sense that Katarina taught me how to protect myself spiritually and how to actually, um, you know, protect the space of the home and to clear um, each room. And it is actually a very long process to do it accordingly, to actually, uh, you know, appropriately clear a house. So it was great to see how much work Katarina puts in to these um, mm. <laughs> to these particular house clearings because Jesus, it's a lot. It's so much. <laughs> I was mind blown. I'm still trying to get my head around it. I haven't Just recovered yet. Shock. I'm still in shock. So, um, and they must say they were two very full-on houses. They were quite haunted. Yeah, and there was a lot going on. They were large the too. One. There was like a lot of rooms. So, mm -hmm. like you have to go in each room and and do it properly. And you can, uh, like you can feel the change. Like I can't can't articulate it into words exactly um, how I felt during the experience, but. Um, it's definitely opened my eyes. I think that one of the most mind blowing experiences that um, it was for me, it was the first time which obviously Katarina guided me through because I didn't know what was happening and I didn't actually know I was capable of this yet, but um, crossing over a spirit to the other side, to God, basically. That's what happened and I was mind blown. <laughs> um, Still can't get my head around it, but the feeling that I got, I got quite emotional because obviously it was my first time mm. doing anything like this and I didn't know I was capable to do anything like that. And um, yeah, it was actually a really beautiful moment. There were other times too, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but Kat, can you elaborate on like the so with the ha with the crossing over spirits, like we said, you saw. We I always bring down the tunnel of light over the home, and that is for the purpose of helping these souls to cross over, so that that tunnel of light is already in the home. It's like bringing the reality of the spirit spirit world together into the physical home, mm -hmm. so that. As we move through the, each room in the house, what happens is we connect with a, a soul or a lost spirit that's there. They're already feeling that light. They're already feeling the light that we have brought down and prepared the, the, the house with. So that's when, when, you, when you saw that soul, I felt like you, you connected from your heart. You've, I felt like you were connecting from your heart and I could sense that you were sending that love. You were feeling mm -hmm. sad, this soul's here, this person's here, they're lost. And so therefore I feel for you that you were able to see that when you kind of connecting and you're doing the spiritual work through your heart, that it is much easier to help these souls to cross over because they're just in, they're just stressed, they're in distress, they're afraid. Some of them aren't aware that they've died or what has happened to them. They can't process what's happened to them. But when you begin to 
send them the love from the heart and send them that healing energy they're able to just start to feel karma and feel the connection of love mm. and that's how it was good for you to be able to well, yeah help it absolutely into the light absolutely and that's how i felt with um with this particular man he was an older man and um like it's funny it's like he was trying to catch my attention as i was trying to clear you know a certain part of the house and mm-hmm. um and he got my attention and then and that's when i you know diverted my attention to him and try to help him as much as i could and i surrounded him and you know the golden light like the tunnel we already created before like prior to that and and it's like it wasn't until he saw his wife and that's he was a bit scared at first um just kind of looking like what are you guys sort of doing it was a, he was, wasn't angry so was his scared. wife was there waiting for so him. then when we sort yeah. of made that connection when he seen his wife it was so much easier for him to go up and that's that's what yeah because well, it, it beautiful it is yeah. He yeah. felt the security yeah. and often with a loss of someone, a family member will show up mm-hmm. to sort of help and encourage them to make that transition. But I know you felt quite emotional because you feel the love of that reun- you feel like- being reunited. It was quite sweet because he was being reunited with his wife and he mm-hmm. probably didn't know where his wife had gone all this time that he died and he was lost in limbo. So it is. And I remember when I started out, crossing souls over i would be crying and watch him going through into the light and going crossing over and then after a while yeah you're not crying so you're just happy for them that they that they're made at home so yeah yeah do you want to tell them a little bit about that other one that wasn't which an actual one? human soul <laughs> which one i had a tell very them. interesting day guys she had very okay cute. so um Yes, well, like I said, this was in, this was a very big house, and there was a lot of activity, a lot of going, on a lot of house. activity. Um, so this was when we were on another level of the house, and um, <clears throat> yeah, so same kind of thing happened. We we're concentrating on a certain area in the room, Cat and myself, and then um, as I'm concentrating in this one area, because like I said, clearing a house it is a long process. It's a very heavy process, and you have to make sure you cover everything in order you know to help that home um and then you know from the corner again i feel something sort of getting my attention something watching me and then it's like okay i feel like i need to divert my attention there and then i see something but i'm like oh okay but it's hiding from me this one and it doesn't really look human it was short it had um kind of glowy eyes (laughs) like the way i can explain it it did not look human this particular thing was not human but it was getting my attention and sort of hiding from me so then i focused my attention on this thing and i tried to do i basically did what you were sending it i was sending it energy and i've always had energy shoot out of my hands since i was little they're always hot so i'm shooting at energy i'm trying to surround it around that golden light to help it cross over whatever it was even though it didn't look human but in shock and Katarina I think seen my shock because this thing when I sent a a lot of a heavy energy healing energy um it didn't sort of go up like the other ones that I crossed over did this one sort of exploded like in particles (laughs) kind of disintegrated disintegrated yeah like that's the way it Mm. it didn't sort of go up to God it it, uh, yeah particles it just disintegrated and and that's when I was confused and I'm like, well, what did I do? <laughs> Which was she disintegrated a human being, but it was actually not a human. It was a very dark entity. It was some sort of very dark ET that had made its way into this house. So often when you um, are clearing like dark entities, demonic entities, they don't really have souls. So there's nothing to cross over, but they, I've seen um, the light actually disintegrates them because it's too much for them. And so they do disintegrate or they just sort of, yeah, kind of. Whoop, it's like I blasted it. Yeah. yeah, can't explain it. It's yeah. like I blasted it. Mm, but that's mm. that's what it was like, yeah. and I was so confused. So she'd just... never seen it. Yeah, because no. this was your first time. So she, yeah, so she's like, oh, I think I just disintegrated someone. And it's like, no, that's okay. So that was... No, I kind of could feel it wasn't yeah. nice. I couldn't, like, mm. it's with the other ones. I, I felt they were nice. I felt the love. I felt that this wasn't nice, and that's why it was hot. So it's sort of, 
intuitively and plus it didn't look that nice mm. too but intuitively i knew it wasn't but i was, I was confused yes i didn't mm. know that, that that's what happens when you clear mm. them mm. yeah mm. Mm. <laughs> so that was very interesting there was what else was there? There was even a few animals trapped in this. Yeah, home. that was actually quite sad for me too. Mm. That's an, um, so um, at this particular property, um, someone in the home must like to go hunting, and I, I don't know. It's like when they sort of stuff the animals after and put them on display. So there was a their few souls ducks. were still attached. Yeah, um, and there was. Yeah, the soul, I didn't, that was a real eye-opener for me too because, um, like, I love animals. They're just, yeah, I'm going to get sad now. But um, so when I was focusing my healing on this particular, um, these particular animals that were still, like, that were stuffed, that were hunted, um, I was surprised to actually find out that their spirit was still attached because, and that was a big eye opener for me also. I didn't realize that that's what happens. Mm. Um, and I've seen it, <laughs> like I've seen it with my eyes and I, I saw it as I focused my healing energy and my intentions and the, the heavenly light on, uh, you know, on what's left of this animal that's on, on display. I actually seen the, um, the spirit like disconnect from it and just go up um it's absolutely mind-blowing like i, I can't articulate it from into the words. physical avatar I was really happy to be freed yeah. yeah yeah there was quite a bit going on yeah there was also a little child in the house too that was lost that had been had um somehow been quite distressed distressed and had gone through uh, some sort of quite a horrific time yeah. when it died we can't really go into details no we can't it. we can't go into detail mm. um but that that he was trapped yeah that brought me to my knees that actually mm. made me very emotional mm. um, yeah it is rare cases that you do see these little ones trapped also it was a home where there was so much going on. There were so many different energies that were happening in this one environment. Like we said, there was there was some uh, quite a few lost souls, human souls that were trapped in this environment. There was a few animals, ducks, mm -hmm. deers. There was this really ugly, low vibrational ET stuck in this home. So that's a lot for someone who's just come on their first experience there was just so much going on mm -hmm. and that's why it's so important to know how to keep everything contained so nothing got out of control but once we were finished the house was so peaceful and full of light and love for those people because there had been so much going on for them emotionally because obviously all those energies were affecting the people that mm -hmm. were living there and affecting the way they slept and the way they, um, you know, felt because that kind of energy is going to make so you heavy. feel so, yeah, heavy. It was, it was very heavy I, when we first walked in. You could feel it. Mm, so heavy. And grim. then after we were done, the shift, oh, my God, like the, mm. the, it just felt so beautiful, so much brighter, so much lighter, mm -hmm. like, yeah, because all it's like wiping the slate clean. That's how I see it. When I go to a house clean, it's like wiping the slate mm -hmm. clean and being able to just, leave, you know, bring in that beautiful essence of love and peace and tranquility. And often, you know, it will bring a lot of healing for the people that are, you know, own that living in the home, the families. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, you're helping all those trapped energies to be freed and, and returning to where they need to go so that it frees them up also rather than them being trapped in the void. Yeah, absolutely. So that was day one and you went home and had a salt bath? I was so drained. I can't <laughs> explain how much it took out of me. But um, look, I, I enjoyed it. I'm not going to say I didn't enjoy it. I just didn't know I could do Like I, I knew I was gifted ever since I was young. I just never knew I was like crossing over people gifted <laughs> but with katarina's help i've got i do have the best teacher of course mm. so you know that makes sense but um yeah i was drained cat really yeah, it was I like know. i had a spiritual hangover it, is, it's it's very very hard. Hard. it took me years <laughs> yeah it took me years to learn to 
be able to do this without getting so drained and that's the part that you'll learn mm -hmm. i think it's just to be able to maintain that higher vibration and then you're not going to be so drained so tired yeah, yeah. just absolutely and my guides taught me work work as quickly as possible like don't stop to talk to each lost soul my guides were like you've got to work fast because if you leave yourself where you start um chatting or talking to and you, your ability you're going to start to get tired and your ability to then maintain the energy and maintain that higher vibration mm -hmm. be able to do the work is going to be lessened and then you're in big trouble if you get an environment out of control yeah so yeah so then there was um day two that julie decided to come along adventure. i thought after the first venture she'd be like no thanks <laughs> but she's very, very brave and she decided to come along for day two i did and once again <laughs> wow <laughs> she wasn't even over day one and then she decided to come i was, I was actually two. still tired after day one and then we went into the other one but look like eye opener once again like i don't know i might be a weirdo but i like you know i love it <laughs> i actually enjoy it and it's good to see um what Katarina does in this environment and just seeing what's what goes into it mm. it's incredible um yeah and once again this house was a bit lots of lost souls a lot of lost souls a lot of spirits a lot of sickness which yeah which actually contributed to and sickness black magic. in the house and, and they'd been had black magic and they had and black magic done to them yeah curse witchcraft which that made the house so heavy it was um, quite there was like dark clouds in there. It was like just dark. So well, dark. yeah, it was like a portal basically there for the dark side clouds. to come in and out um, mm. because of the previous, not the people that were living there, but the previous owners of what they were doing in that home. It was very, yeah, with the witchcraft and ooh. yeah, we felt that, yeah, that the, I definitely felt we felt that that the people who had owned the house previously to these people yeah. had moved in were some sort of practicing kind of witchcraft, oh, the heavy, dark witchcraft, the yucky the, stuff, the yucky stuff. That so we there don't was like. that sort of energy in the background, and then these people had moved in, and they were the wife was never really happy there she never really liked the home she couldn't connect with her so she started all the time all day when we were there she's like i just always hated this house hated this house yeah she did she actually she couldn't stop saying how much she hated, she hated it house. yeah so she kept kind of <laughs> Filling the home with more darkness and hatred, and I'm like, look, after we've cleared this, you've yeah, got don't to talk stop, about your house stop like that. Hating. Stop it. You've got to love it. You've <laughs> got to give your environment love. So that was a really dark sort of home, wasn't it? It was the and darkness of the witchcraft and the and they were sick. You know, they the the husband mm. has has not been very well, and mm. um, yeah. Yeah, not well at all. Um, we had to give him lots of healing. We did give him a nice healing. At least he's got a nice space now that he can hopefully heal and feel better in. Well, it's funny. after we, um, you know, we did a little healing on him and um, he looked so much calmer mm. and he, he looked like he was in a deepest, you know, sleep Yeah, resting and, more peacefully. Uh, mm. Yeah, and another thing, like in these homes with all this activity, right, like um, the animals, uh, I forgot to mention it from – the other my first adventure but the animals in the home they can pick up on this energy yeah, and that little dog and it was stresses mm, them yeah it gives them um and even this house the one that mm. we're on now um there was the two beautiful puppies and mm. god i love them they, just, they were very cute I but love they them. were a little anxious in the house too yeah so they can feel they can feel it and it um it stresses them they actually they, they get some type of anxiety because mm. they can remember animals can see things that we can't mm. um you know or not they get that every normal person can see so it, it scares them they see all these spirits of night and um, that's what, you know, a lot of, I guess, dogs and even cats get treated for, what, ADHD and mm -hmm. all these... For anxiety and Anxiety stress. issues. And it can be their environment that's quite yeah. haunted, absolutely. Yeah, and, you know, and you find that after, like, you clear a, a space that's so haunted, that has this much activity, that the animals are so calm. Mm. And it, not only the people live 
like you know in harmony but also the animals were following us as that they knew we were doing something good no yeah they kept, they're, they kept following us was, I, I, I was the they got attached to me she started calling me the bloody animal with her but I, I can't help it they were jumping on top of you oh, I like and animals loving. more than people <laughs> Maybe we don't say that too much. <laughs> no, but sometimes I just, no, you know, that they love they their, their unconditional love. You yeah, know, you can just cuddle extra. them. Yeah, they're just very, very. Um, mm. But they have a good reaction to. to I think. Yeah, and they had a good reaction to. They, it's like they knew we were there to do something good for, for the environment. Because they, yeah. they can sense that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, mm. So yeah, with the animals, even like after. A, they're, they're so much more calmer and I, and I love that because we're not only helping people we're helping mm. the little animals too yeah they have <laughs> pets often yeah they're, they're going to become very distressed in a in an environment that is um unsettled and has you know multiple layers of different energies going on because they you know they do sense and feel they're so much more intuitive than than often than the humans are so they can get very frightened and distressed in these types of environments mm -hmm. yeah it was very eye-opening for eye-opening but like i said it's incredible how after it's all done and it is a long process mm. how the environment is just Peaceful and calm, mm. isn't it? Yeah, you can feel it. And it's also, it's very rewarding. Very rewarding. To walk into a house and go, oh my God, this is so heavy. And then hours later, it's just nice and peaceful. Yeah, because at the beginning, because I, I feel things a lot. Mm. And like I felt sick, I felt nauseous in some of the rooms. I felt even like a heaviness mm. in my chest, like... Yeah, like you can't. You you sometimes will experience what's going on. Even in one of the rooms, I, I didn't want to go in there. It was a bit hard, so we sort of had to clear it from a distance. Mm. Yeah, I space. found it hard to go in some rooms that I have yeah. to kind of yeah. clear from a distance yeah, first before I can actually step in. Because it's thick. Because there's such dark, and there's often just this like whirlwind portal of darkness swirling around in a particular area or room in a house that I'm like no I have to do this from a distance first yeah yeah, yeah absolutely yeah but the important thing now is you know learning to maintain that higher vibration being able to hold that connection with your guides being able to keep an environment under control mm -hmm. yeah, yeah keep that vibration in the house keep the light keep the love in there mm. um it's always important but thank you Kat that was the best experience I had like yeah really. yeah it's good I'm like glad I knew I was gifted brave. I didn't know I was that gifted that was amazing <laughs> never ever I can never you did forget really that well like she really did she really it made made it even easier for me she was channeling the light she was she stayed connected with her guides it was really good to have you on board and I think that you know it's good I think it's it's really important that we all learn to sort of be able to work with energy, to bring in light, to open up portals of light and love in your home. I mean, you may not, offer, you know, not everybody's living in a heavy, dark environment. In, no. But I think every home needs that occasional spiritual wash, that occasion where you bring in the love, you open up a portal of light from heavenly realms and you bring love and light into your home. Just always make it a space that, you know, your home is a sacred space. Space, you know I know even I, I, I meet a lot of people that are often having big parties in their home or they've got all their friends coming over so and, all those energies are yes, coming in and they live yeah it's good to sometimes be able to just have bring in mm. some peace open up that portal of love and light and just bring peace through your home because your home is your sacred space absolutely even with my house anyone that sort of steps in after I, I sort of do a bit of a clearing just a bit of a prayer because it's just it's always yes. nice to keep it fresh it's my sacred space mm. Yeah, especially sometimes um, you have friends over, they're very distraught, they're sitting there crying, they've just broken up with their husband or they've just lost their jobs and they're leaving all that anxiety in your yeah, home. Yeah, so sort of got to push it yeah, all out. Yeah, it's good. Just, <laughs> yeah, get into a meditative state, mm -hmm. feel yourself connecting to the light and just bring in the light wherever, you know, if they were sitting in the kitchen or wherever they were sitting and just, you know, 
feel like a little tornado spinning around all those emotions and just lifting it out of your home because you don't want to keep all that energy in your home that baggage yeah and burning beautiful essential oils is so lovely to do, lovely thing to do in your home so nice i love too. it oh, I, I love, love my good old candle i love yeah. just sitting and relaxing with a beautiful candle mm. Yeah, yeah, creating that environment. Yeah. I'm not a fan of those um, incense sticks. Um, those sticky the diffusers, that's what they're called. No, those incense sticks. Oh, those the in- sticks that you like. Yeah, yeah, yeah where they sort of, I don't like them too. No, no. good, I'm not a fan. No, but I love essential oils or mm. like a nice candle and just, you know, meditating, bringing in the light. That's how you can maintain your environment and make it a beautiful space for yourself to live in with your. Yeah, your friends, your family to share. Absolutely. So do you think you're going to come back for more? I think I'm going to do a lot more, Kat. What do you think? Wow. Well, like I'm ready. I'm brave. <laughs> I'm brave. I say that. Brave. And then I get exhausted. I thought after the two, she'd be like, and they were too heavy. Huh? i got to say, I did a spiritual hangover. I don't know if that's a thing. She has but got it's a spiritual like I've just hangover. <laughs> So exhausted. Still, still, still recovering. This is only the next day after a big clearing. So she's she's a little spiritually. Yeah. So if I don't look at myself, I don't even. Yeah, I'm a bit knocked out. Sorry. <laughs> You're fine. But yeah, so I would love to join you again, and maybe yeah. we can tell some more stories. Yeah, wonderful. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, All right. thank you for um, tuning into our episode today and um, have a beautiful day wherever you are and sending you lots of love and thank you for supporting us and please subscribe and see you next time to gain access to private spiritual development classes guided meditations and live q a's with katarina please visit www.patreon that's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash the Australian Ghost Whisperer.